I uh, happened to run into Norman Jewison several months ago. And I said, Mr. Jewison, you know, it's time for you to uh, make a new film. You know, I was half jokingly and said, you know, come down to Pinewood, Toronto and make a movie. And he said, very, without missing a beat, he said, you know, they don't want to make my kind of movies anymore. So I wanted to ask you, you've, you've been a great proponent of the new techniques and technologies in film. At the same time, you've said, you still need to tell a simple story. It has to work as a story. It's a much more technologically advanced story, but it still has to be a story. Maybe you could elaborate on that and perhaps agree or disagree with Mr. Jewison. Well, I agree with Norman totally, totally. The truth is, is that technology has altered our consciousness when it comes to visual information. We now have the technique and the ability to take the new technology and utilize it in the context of writing a screenplay in order to give the character more depth and more direction. An example I use is Casablanca and the love scene from Casablanca, the flashback. We find out why Rick and Ilsa were so happy together and what happened to cause Rick's bitterness and cynicism. And the truth is that Casablanca is told in present time and then suddenly there's a flashback that's 12 to 14 minutes long and it's just simply dropped into the narrative line. And then the story goes on as if nothing had happened, but we learn why the love happened and why Rick is feeling the way he does. That's an idea that the flashback is simply inserted into the storyline without any other means. That's what it was to give us information. You go to a film like today, uh, you go to a film like The Bourne Supremacy, The Bourne Ultimatum that uses high technology and so on. And there are those flashbacks of memory, flash forwards of fantasy, um, uh, snippets of, of fragments of memories and so on are integrated into the action, meaning they're just thrown in, a piece there. He looks out the window, bang, cut back to the present time. He's walking down a door, flashback, bang. Uh, we cut back to the present moment. He opens the door, bang, we're in a flashback moment. Meaning that all the transitions of technology can take us into the storyline in present time. Now, the distinction is between technology today of analog, the difference between analog and digital. What is analog but a series of bytes that are individual that have to be done individually? Sound, music, special effects, dialogue tracks, uh, whatever. These are all individual tracks in analog, and then you pile them one on top of the other, then you photograph it for an optical negative track, and you have a multiple storyline, basically with sound and effects and dialogue. But today in digital, all bytes are the same, meaning that sound is read as music, is read as dialogue, is read as special effect. So we now, with that technology, which has been around since the beginning of time, we're now able to use the tools that the novelists use in present time because of technology and insert them into the visual storyline. And for one reason and one reason only, to give us more depth and emotion and dimension to the character so we know who they are. And we've not yet done it. We've not had a film that really explores this to its magnitude. The Bourne comes closest because he's trying to recreate an event in his life that he cannot recall. So it comes to him in snippets of memories and visual scenes and so on. And there we have this new technology telling a story the same way that we go with the character as they are going through the action line to find out what he wants to learn at the same time he learns it. So audience and character are connected on one line. And because we have the technology today that can do that, the writers have to learn the new tools of technology in order to make their characters more dimensional in terms of their storyline. Because it's all story. When you come down to it, it's all story. It's a story told with pictures and dialogue and, and description and placed within the context of dramatic structure with a definite beginning, middle, and end, but not necessarily in that order. 
that would suggest then that the nature of screenwriting has, has changed uh, somewhat. Um, more in emphasis on, on visual storytelling, as you, as you put it, and maybe less significance on words. That may or may not be true. But how does a new screenwriter uh, deal with the new technology? Um, is, there a, uh, is there a school that's now developing that's trying to encourage screenwriters to focus on the new tools that are available to them? Well, there's a generational thing here that we have to go into as well. And I'm going to tell you a little sidetrack story. I have two nephews. One is uh, eight and one is ten. Um, and they are on the internet all the time and they are with the computer all the time. Uh, their father was having a surprise birthday party and they wanted to make a video for him. So the young ten-year-old took his homemade camera, went through the family stills, got audio interviews with people, the grocer, the butcher, and so on, that he goes to all the, all the time, went to um, uh, someone for an interview on, uh, who works with my, uh, my, my cousin, uh, and they threw together an internet presentation of the life of their father with stills, family pictures, live interviews, all these tools that we have they put together in a three minute little film. That's what the screenwriter has to learn, to incorporate the tools of his or her profession in such a way that they can use the special effects. On my screenplay, what's interesting, it comes up right now, is that I took the memory of, my character's a widower, and we took the memory of he and his wife only move the memory into present time so the wife in memory can talk to him because that's the heart talking to ourselves, basically. And then I use a flashback of the events that are happening to the earth at this present moment in time, and I began to tell the present story going back into memory, going back into hypothetical memory where she is advising him what to do, and going him into the past memory of their lives, and I wove that all together into a screenplay. And that, I think, is why it's, people are interested in it. It's fascinating. Uh, you spoke, uh, referred to a generational uh, gap, I guess, or generational differences in how films are being produced and made. Certainly today we're seeing huge productions um, merging with the gaming industry. And so you're taking storylines and characters from gaming and they're being turned into films. This is a way of telling a story and a new form of narrative coming out of gaming and vice versa. You, know, you have films being created that are turned into games. And could you tell us what the influence of the gaming industry has been on screenwriters? Well, it's very interesting, Alfredo, that you should say that. Uh, I did a book signing on Sunday before I left for Toronto. And uh, one of the people at the book signing was a game designer writer. And he kept asking me about how important story was in terms of a game. So I said, look, if you have a game where you just have someone out there shooting this person, this person, this person, or trying to get balls in this basket, in this basket, in this basket, after a while your interest begins to sag. There's got to be a purpose why that character is in the game, and there's got to be a survival mode as how the, the character can't overcome these obstacles in order to achieve victory or the highest score. It makes no difference. And I showed to him that the exact same principles of story are valid in game design as they are in, in motion pictures and TV. The form may be a little different. TV, you have your commercials you deal with. You have time constraints. And in games, you can have only so many things per I don't know what. But the idea is if you must have a story where a character wants to get something, to achieve something, in order to achieve a purpose. So, I mean, if I want to go to Toronto, my purpose is in overcoming the rain, overcoming the sun, overcoming the snow, overcoming the whatever, to get to Toronto. And that's the game. So, you know, I mean, um, John Hughes did a film called Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. That's the function of a story. I mean, you know, how do you get there when there's no way to get there? Excellent advice for uh, game designers. Know your story. <laughs> <laughs>